video, we're actually going to look at the process of preparing a statement of cash flows. So let's first talk about the four steps, really the basic four steps that are involved in preparing a statement of cash flows. The first one is to look at the first section of the statement of cash flows, which is the operating activity section. And this section can actually be created using one of two methods. One is the direct method, one is the indirect method. And this discussion, we're gonna focus mainly on the indirect method. The next step would be to compute the net cash provided or used by investing or financing activities. Then by summing those three sections, the operating, investing, and financing activities, you will find the change in cash during the period, which should also be the difference in your beginning and ending cash from your balance sheet. So let's take a look at um, an actual statement of cash flows here. We're going to create one using this income statement from Telemarketing Inc. and the balance sheet. Now you can see from the balance sheet, this looks like it's the first year of operations because all of our balance sheet accounts started with a zero balance and now we have a balance in them at the end of the period or at the end of the year. So to be able to, to, to create a statement of cash flows, we want the change because we're analyzing each one of these accounts. So we need the change from beginning to end. So that's why we have uh, two sets of data here. And you can see in red the actual change in these accounts. So whether they increased or decreased throughout the year. And it looks like all of these increased. So that's very important to note when we get into the statement of cash flows. And you can see the income statement here because we will need certain data out of the income statement if it exists. So let's start with our, our cash provided by operating activities. And again, we're using the indirect method and we know that because by looking at the operating activities section here on the, the statement of cash flows, we are starting with net income. That's a clear signal that this, is, um, that this statement of cash flows is, is created using the indirect method. So we want to adjust, again remember in the operating activities section, we are analyzing all the current assets, all the current liabilities, depreciation, and gains and losses. So that's what we need to look for. So we'll start with our net income. So we bring the net income down into the statement of cash flows. And now we're going to want to adjust again for all the current assets and all the current liabilities. Look for any depreciation and gains and losses. Well, if we look at our income statement, we don't see any depreciation expense there and we don't see any gains and losses. So I'm going to jump right to my current assets and the first one I see there, we don't analyze cash itself in the operating activity section. Remember, we're trying to see where that $31,000 change or $31,000 increase in cash came from. So that's what the statement of cash flows is going to show us. So we skip over that account and we look for accounts receivable. It went from 0 to 41, so it was a $41,000 increase. So we're going to put that directly on our um, operating activity section of the statement of cash flows. Now, I, as you can see here, we are subtracting it from net income because think about what an increase in accounts receivable does. We must have earned revenues, which again increased net income, and we earned them on account because accounts receivable has increased. Well, if we earn them on account, that means we haven't received the cash. So we need to subtract that from net income to get net income from an accrual basis to a cash basis. So that's what we're doing in this operating activity section. Then the next thing I see here that I'm going to analyze, not land because land is not a current asset. So we're going to jump down to the current liabilities and we have one of them and it's accounts payable. And we see that accounts payable increased from zero to $12,000. So that will be an increase on the statement of cash flows because what would make accounts payable increase? Well, for example, you might have got a utility bill. Well, a utility bill is, is an expense which reduced your net income. But if it went on accounts payable or utilities payable or whatever the case may be, then that did not effectively reduce cash. So you have to add that back. Remember, we're adjusting net income from the accrual basis back to cash basis. And then we can find our net cash provided by operating activities in this case because net income of $39,000 is higher than the adjustments to net income. 
So we have net cash provided by operating activities. Is that if this were a negative number, it would be net cash used by operating activities. Our next step is to move from the operating activity section to the investing and financing activity section. So in the investing activity section, we're going to analyze all of our long-term assets. So we have one, and it's land. And it looks like we our land went up, so that means we purchased land. That insinuates that cash went down, so we're reducing that. So it will be a negative number. And we only had the one, so this will be net cash used by investing activities. In the cash flows from financing activities, recall that we're analyzing all of the long-term liabilities and our stockholders' equity accounts. In this case, we do not have any long-term liabilities, so we're going to jump right to our equity. And it looks like we issued common stock of $50,000, so we will put that on our financing activity section. If we issue stock, that means we are receiving cash, so that will be an addition to cash. And if we look at our retained earnings, and we'll talk about this in a second, but if we look at retained earnings, it went from zero to $25,000. Now, don't just assume that that is all net income or dividends are a certain amount. Remember, you got to think about what affects retained earnings. And there's two things that affect retained earnings, net income and payment of any dividends. So we started with zero retained earnings. And we had net income of $39,000, but we ended the period not with $39,000, with $25,000. So therefore, how much did we pay in dividends? It would be the difference, right? So we paid $14,000 in dividends, which effectively reduces cash. Therefore, our net cash provided by financing activities would be $36,000. If we sum those three sections, the $10,000 provided by operating, the 15,000 used by investing, and the 36,000 provided by financing, we will end up with a net increase in cash of $31,000. We started the period or the beginning of the year with zero. Therefore, our cash at the end of the year on the balance sheet is 31,000. So it, it equals out. So before we end our discussion on preparing the statement of cash flows, there's a couple of T accounts I want us to review. I want us to look at property, plant, and equipment, net, and retained earnings. So let's start with property, plant, and equipment, net. Sometimes you won't see just property, plant, and equipment. You will see property, plant, and equipment, net. That means it's net of depreciation. So depreciation has already come out. So we need to recreate this T account so that we can ultimately find how much property, plant, and equipment were purchased during the year. So we know if we have beginning and we have our ending, and we know what our depreciation expense was for the period, then we can find the purchases for the period with simple math. Okay, retained earnings the same way. We just looked at this, but let's recall retained earnings carries a credit balance. We know that net income increases retained earnings, so beginning retained earnings plus net income minus your ending retained earnings would give us our dividends for the period.